Hello world, this is Lisa Fredrickson, your friend and computer science professor with another short screencast from javascript.info, the modern javascript tutorial. We're back up in part one, the javascript language, and are ready for 2.8, comparisons. Comparisons are very similar to what you learned in algebra class. Is a greater than b? Is a less than b? Is a greater than or equal to b? And is a less than or equal to b? If you're messed up on these greater than and less than symbols, just remember the pointy part always points to what's supposed to be smaller. The big part, the open part, points to what's supposed to be bigger. And the result of comparing the two is always true or false. And in JavaScript land, we call that Boolean. Only two answers, true or false. Now here's a tricky one, equal sign. When you're comparing is A equal to B, we use two, or you'll see in a second, three equal signs. It's much different than the single equal sign, which is actually the assignment operator. That's why I've implored you to say when you are creating variables and you're using a single equal sign to assign that variable name to an expression that you say is assigned to. Because now with two equal signs, we're going to say is equal to, and we're actually going to be doing a comparison. The single equal sign never does a comparison. It always does an assignment. If you're expecting true or false out of an assignment, you're always going to get true. The exclamation point in front of an equal sign means not equal to. So it basically turns true into false and false into true. Let's go look at that in a little web page. I've created a new web page and eventually this is where we're going to drive the bus. So we'll have some input boxes and some values and we'll do some interactions with those values with JavaScript. But for right now, we're just going to write some assignment statements with a single equal sign then do some comparisons in the console. Test one is assigned to 90 points. Test two is assigned to 80 points, and those would both be numbers. And then we're going to console log is test one greater than test two, and we're expecting true. Let's also console log is test one less than test two. We'll console log is test one equal to test two, and we'll console log is test one not equal to test two. So just reading this, we're expecting 90 to be greater than 80. We're expecting true. Here we're expecting false. Is test one equal to Test two, we're expecting false. And is test one not equal to test two, we're expecting true. So let's save that and refresh our web page. True, false, false, true, that's what we got. I wanted to test is greater than or equal to, just stick the equal sign right behind it. Is less than or equal to, just stick the equal sign right behind it. And I'm gonna get the same answers here and the same answers in my console. So again, one of the most important things that you can be reminded of in this lesson is that the single equal sign is the assignment operator. The double equal sign is a comparison. It's asking, are the two equal? But given that JavaScript is a loosely typed language, given that JavaScript does not require you to declare variables as a number or as a character, it gets even more interesting than this. For example, if test one were the number 90 and test two were the string 90, how would these comparisons work? Let's find out what happens when we compare a number to a string. 90 the number greater than 90 the string? What's your guess? How about less than 90 the string? How about equal to 90 the string? And how about not equal to 90 the string? Here's how these are going to turn out. False, false, true, and false. Let's save and refresh our page and look at our console. False, false, true, false. The reason why is behind the scenes, when you compare a number to a string, just like when we were multiplying it or dividing it or subtracting it, is converted into a number to make this comparison. So this is really comparing 90 to 90, two numbers, and that's false. If I said is test one greater than or equal to test two, and is test one less than or equal to test two, then these two are gonna turn into true because 90 is greater than or equal to 90 and 90 is less than or equal to 90 because of the equal sign. And let's save and refresh and we find that that to be true. So when we compare two values of different types, a string is converted into a number in an attempt to make this conversion make sense. Now there's a trick though. If you want to compare them both in terms of value and in terms of data type, you can use a triple equals. And if you triple equals the number 90 with the text 90, you're going to get false. And let's save and refresh. And I did get false in my console. So the number 90 triple equals text string 90 is false because they are not the same in both value and in data type. 
The same is true with the not operator. If I have two equal signs after that, now it's testing, are they not equal to each other in both value and in data type? And that's going to end up being true. Save, refresh, and it's true. 90 and the string 90, if you compare two different values and they're of different type with the triple equals, it's always going to be false. It doesn't really matter what the values are. If you compare two different values of different types with the not operator, it's always going to be true. It doesn't matter what the values are because we know the data types are not the same. The lesson also talks about comparing strings and how capital letters and lowercase letters are not equal to one another and how they are sorted. And there's also quite a bit of discussion about null and undefined. We know we get undefined when we create a variable. We do not assign it with a single equal sign to any value. So test three is now equal to undefined. If I just console log test three, I'm going to get undefined in my console, undefined from line 13. So the lesson does a good job of comparing null, which is an intentional nothing, undefined, and how those compare. And the moral to the story is basically when you're comparing values, typically you'll see strict equality, triple equals used instead of double equals, unless there's a comment as to why double equals was used. You typically see not double equals for strict not equality as compared to not single equals, which allows the values to be converted behind the scenes in order to make sense of the comparison.